as you know, as you know, we issued the news on Monday afternoon that after eight very enjoyable and eventful years, Steve Morgan has decided to put his 100% shareholding in the club up for sale, whilst remaining as owner until such a time as a new custodian uh, can be found for Wolves. After just a few days, there isn't much to add to Monday's statement, as I'm sure you'll all appreciate. However, um, we've got a philosophy here of being completely open with you guys, the media, and also our supporters, and that's why we're here today for Jez to answer the questions in the best way he possibly can with the information we, we have to hand at the moment. Um, today's an all-in-one press conference, so if you've got a point or a question to make, please do so within this particular forum. Can I ask any photographers, please, do take any pictures you require, but out of respect to our broadcast colleagues, if you wouldn't mind to put the camera down, then as always, that's really appreciated. Thank you. Um, so, Jez, I know you'd like to say a few words, so before we take questions, sure. over to you. Morning, guys. Thank you. Um, I've got some notes I'm going to refer to, if you don't mind, because I've got quite a bit to say. Um, so just bear with me and then I can try and answer any questions that you've got. So firstly, on a personal note, I was extremely saddened um, by the news on Monday. Um, although Steve remains the owner of the club until a new one can be found, um, I think we've lost a chairman and it's a sad that we've lost a chairman because he was totally and utterly committed to Wolves. Steve's always understood this huge challenge, the unique responsibility of running a football club and his passion and commitment towards the team has taken up an enormous amount of his time and his energy. Steve told me that there isn't one single reason why he's reached this decision. It's more a cumulative effect of many different factors. Steve's a man who works harder and longer than any person I've ever known in my entire life. Um, as well as Wolves, he runs Red Row, um, PLC, which is a national house building firm. Um, he has several other personal business interests, both home and abroad, and he remains committed to very many different charities um, and community initiatives, initiatives via the Morgan Foundation and by the Wolves Community Trust. Given all of this, it actually surprises me how much time he's been able to devote to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Following his divorce, over two years ago, he now has a new partner. He has reassessed his time commitments and feels the time is right to pass the club on to somebody else as he can no longer devote the necessary time and energy to being Wolves chairman. Consequently, he has stepped down from the board and will not be involved in the club's day-to-day -day activities. He will, of course, work with us in regards to the sale of the club and bringing in a new owner. From the day Steve walked through the door in 2007, his commitment has been clear from investing in the club's infrastructure and on the team and on new players. Steve has a belief that the football club should run in a sustainable way, with a sensible strategy. A strategy that involves an emphasis on producing our own players, driven by a massive investment both in terms of capital and ongoing costs in the academy whilst at the same time buying players as and when required. Some people will of course say he hasn't done enough, but during the last eight years he has sanctioned over £85 million um, being spent on buying and acquiring new players, and that does not include wages. Throughout his chairmanship, Steve's philosophy has always been to put the football first, but without ever overstretching the finances to a degree that we have seen with other clubs where they run into serious difficulties, administration, points deductions, and almost go out of business as a consequence of insolvency. And as by way of an example of that, of him putting the football first, as people will remember, we could have sold Bakri Sacco in January for a lot of money, but we didn't. We could have sold Benicophobi in the summer for a huge amount of money, but didn't. Why? Because Steve wanted to have the best possible team. And of course we knew that Bakri Sacco, if he, didn't re if he didn't get promoted, would probably leave for nothing. Football is always first with Steve. Steve's been, Steve is a highly successful and well-respected businessman who clearly has Wolves' best interests at heart. Under his leadership, we've always aimed to run the club, and I think the business is sometimes crazy environment 
amid inflated transfer fees and crazy wages, and um, which is all pushed by this massive influx of money at the top end of the Premier League. But he wants to run it in a sustainable manner and not in a boom and bust situation that we've seen in the past. At the same time, never losing sight of the dream of trying to return to the top division. And we believe that that can be achieved again. In fact, it's probably worth remembering that the club has spent four seasons in the Premier League in the past 32 years. Three of those Premier League seasons were during Steve's chairmanship. I think Steve, seeing him step down as chairman, is not only sad for Wolves, but is very sad for the city as well. We appreciated the warmth of the public statement the City Council issued yesterday, <coughs> reflecting that fact. Away from football, Steve is a massive supporter of our charity work for Wolves Community Trust. He's vol voluntarily donated over two million pounds hard cash directly to Wolverhampton during the period to local charities and community groups. He's shown incredible benevolence and leadership in building the Way Youth Zone in Wolverhampton City Centre, which in my opinion will be the most incredible um, charitable activity for underprivileged children this area will ever see. I invite you all to go up and see it if you haven't. In addition, the Morgan Foundation has given away over 30 million pounds of cash to good causes in the northwest of the country, funded by Steve Morgan, primarily funded by Steve Morgan himself. And I don't know anybody who is able to give this level of benevolence. He doesn't do it for thanks or recognition, but does it because he has a heart of gold. Yet in contrast, Steve often receives criticism from some people over football matters now he knows it certainly goes with the territory, as we all do who are involved with football, but if some of the more severe vitriol has in some way contributed to this decision, then I do think it's very, very unfortunate. Sometimes, publicly at least, it's people who shout the loudest who get heard the most. However, we've received many, many letters, emails, phone calls from people from all walks of life recognising Steve's contribution to Wolves and thanking him for his efforts as chairman while still appreciating he's committed to the club financially until such time as a new owner, the right owner, can be found for Wolves. And Steve wishes to thank everyone who has supported him and the club during his time. When Wolves was put up for sale, it took a period of four years to find Steve. As we all know, there are plenty of football clubs in this country that are for sale. I think all the principal Midlands clubs are up for sale. And like them, we'll carry on operating in the same way as before, very much business as usual. I think the task of finding someone equal or better than Steve Morgan will be an enormous challenge. We will strive to accomplish this in a private and professional manner, but it will take time and for the record, we will not be issuing regular updates to the press and media on how that process is going because I'm feeling we'll be issuing, we'd be issuing statements saying nothing to report, nothing to report for a very long time. So I hope you will respect that view. On a day-to-day -day basis, the board, our staff and I will continue to work as hard as we can uh, to fulfil the responsibilities of running this great football club. We have an exciting young team led by an outstanding coach and support staff. We believe we're in a very good position to proceed with some confidence about the football task that faces us. As ever, this will be made easier with fiercely passionate, noisy supporters backing the team as they usually do home and away. It's still very early on in the season and we're only three points off the playoffs with I think 37 games to go. We believe it's possible for this football club to achieve all that it wants to achieve and for our supporters and all our stakeholders to enjoy the success that that could bring. Now, that's what I wanted to say. Now to the <coughs> part. He, he, he's 
now left the club effectively, if you, if you like. So he's, he's no longer committed to the workload that he was as chair. Correct. So is it fair to assume, you mentioned Steve's divorce, you mentioned a new partner. Has the club and dealing with the club impinged on his personal life? Do you think he's private one? I think it's taken. It's another thing that takes up his time. He's got young children. He's got you know interests outside of football, and the more he spends time at football, the less time he's got for something else. So his commitment to the club, do you think, has affected his personal life? I think that um, he's reassessed his um, time commitments and decided that football is one that he can step away from to obviously pursue other things. His business philosophy as well, and. Uh, mentioned the, the ethics that you know he swears by. Will this be reflected in who he will sell the club to? Because obviously Sir Jack wouldn't sell to certain people. Would Steve be the same? We want to find obviously the right person from wherever that comes. But that means people of respectable background, you know, with good business practice. Because we all know there are that some rogues have come into football over the years. I, th I, I think Steve's reputation is very important to him. So his legacy will, I'm sure, and I'm speaking personally, will ensure be important to him. So finding the right person to take the club forward is, a, is absolutely of paramount importance, yeah. The, we all remember that Sir Jack with the 10 pounds, but you must put in 30 million. Did Steve do that? Did he achieve that uh, or, or, and more? Yeah, I'm surprised by the, by the question, really. Um, Day one that Steve took over, £30 million was transferred from his bank account into the bank account of Wolverhampton Wanderers. On day one, I mean, we were sitting on the completion, we sat around the table, ready to sign the documents. If we sign the documents, people, banks on the phone, solicitors on the phone, the money came in day one, the first thing that happened. So how much do you estimate that Steve, that a personal fortune, put into the club? What I'm not what I'm not going to do is, is say things that are not already out in the public domain. Steve's the, what is it public is that on day one Steve put in thirty million pounds, and some of the figures that I've spent under his leadership, he sanctioned over eighty five million pounds worth of player expenditure, transfer fees, agents fees, not including the um, uh, the wages of players. So his commitment has been fulsome, and when when we get Bakary Sacco, who we could have sold for millions of pounds in January to a Premier League team, knowing that he's coming out of contract, his decision was, let's not sell him. Why? Well, because we want to give the team the best opportunity to get promotion, get into the playoffs and what have you. And it nearly worked because we've got more points than any team's ever got and not got into the playoffs. And then he walks away for nothing. Steve knows, knew that that could happen, but he made, took that decision and he's the only one along with the finances of the club as a whole that's ultimately responsible for that. But just and, the same, and the same with Benny Kofobi. We saw what happened to Nua Dicker, didn't we? You know, so, so if Steve wanted to, he could have cashed in on Benny Kofobi, but ten, he didn't. 10 to 15 million in the summer? Is that what you, you were offered? It was a, it was a, 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 it's not something we've said, but you're in the right part, yeah. And just finally, I mean, Steve's been involved with housing, years and years. Now, every Midlands club at the minute has got off a sale sign, it seems. It just seems a strange time to sell. So does it mean that Steve just had enough? Because it, it does seem an odd time, does it not? Or you tell me, is it a good time? Well, I, th it's, I think it's a fair question because people have said to me in the last day or two, why not in the summer then? You know, Why not before the start of the season? But I think with Steve Moore, you've got to understand that he's a very um, decisive person and he's a very honest person. And when you have those two combinations, when he reaches a decision in his mind, whenever it may be, he doesn't think what I should now do is sit on that for a month or two months or what have you. He says, I want to tell people because I want to be honest because it will probably sneak out if I don't leak out if I don't do that. And I'll do it now. And Jez, you've got four hours to get it sorted. Off you go. So he just had enough. Well, he just, just no. He just decided that he'd, I'm, he'd been reflecting on it for some time. It wasn't a knee-jerk reaction, an accumulation of things that have drawn him to the conclusion that he reached on Monday. Jez, you talked about you know, obviously some fans very supportive of him, others less so, and you talked about you know, some of the fans who uh, have, have the biggest gripes to speak loudest. There have been a lot of rumours that he got a bit of abuse at the Preston game, and that was the thing that 
finally pushed him over the edge. What do you say about that? Well, I saw Steve drive up because the boardroom's over the car park, and I actually saw him leave because he left before I did. There, he did have some words, or some supporters, Wolf supporters, did have words with him before the game, and I think there were Preston fans actually that were that that had a word with him. Um, and we're talking small numbers here as he left, and then maybe people had you know, seen him in his car or what have you. But that's part and parcel of the game, and he understands that. So he can take the rough and the smooth of supporter abuse, and we all get it, and we all don't like it, um, but it's just part and parcel of the game, and anyone who comes into the game understands that, or needs to understand that. So he, he, he got that, and that wasn't the reason. He was used to that then? Well, I wouldn't I say you ever get used it, to it. No, no, I mean, I've been involved in the game for 25 years, yes. and you don't, you're not used to it, and you still get it. But people don't understand, people are so passionate about what they want. And the, the whole industry is, is, is fueled by seeing what Manchester City do, what Manchester United do, and, and everyone wants your, their club to do the same. And therefore they think when somebody can't do the same, there's something wrong with them because it's normal to spend £100 million in, a, in the summer transfer window. It must be, come on, we're a big club. Look at the history of our football club. We're often measured by the history of our club, aren't we? Our once proud club, what did we do? Three times title winners, European, you know. Why aren't we doing it now? Well, the, the whole thing is different and people need to understand that um, there aren't all of these owners that are just out there um, ready to spend their own money on fueling a football club it's transfer policy. The Premier League, is when you're in the Premier League now, it's such a lopsided environment, isn't it? That So a smaller club could be in the Premier League and spend money that a bigger club, by history, by awards against, say, a smaller team in the Premier League, suddenly we can't compete financially. And the supporters want their owners to, well, it doesn't matter, get your checkbook out and compete equally. So had he fallen out of love with some of those supporters then, and that's no, I don't think no, I don't think he's fallen out of love with the supporters. I think his reasons are cumulative effect, and um, at no point has he said to me that, it, that that supporters have driven him out or anything. Like that. That's not the case. We, um, we, how much does he want for the club? Sorry, ten pound. Yeah. Well, do we know? No, no. I mean, we're no. not. As we have, much to your frustration over the years. When it comes to negotiating, whether it's four players or what have you, you know that we try extremely hard to keep things private and confidential, and we will do that absolutely in regard to this. We're not saying it won't be something we'll be discussing publicly. With, with no one seeming to want to buy Villa and the problems of Birmingham, do you, do you think you're going to find an owner for Wolves? Do you think anyone has got a hunger for Midlands football at the moment? That's a really good question. That's why I say. Listen, we're not going to be issuing regular press updates on where we are because I think it's going to take some time. Anything can happen. I mean, the beauty with this club, perhaps against some of the others, is that it is owned by one man, 100%. There's no debt. The stadium is, in effect, freehold. The training ground is a £20 million new training ground that is, in effect, freehold. It's a very, as it was before, it's a very clean football club and it's a very um, simple transaction to do if somebody wants to do it. But do people have an appetite for football, Midlands football, football in general? We're going to find out, aren't we? You talked about um, Steve's reputation and wanting to maintain that. Um, obviously the way Sir Jack handed over it, that's never going to happen again, but it was a wonderful mark of the man. Do you think Steve would be open to something similar where obviously he got some of his money back or all of his money back, but anything on top could be agreed to be invested in players? I mean, I think Steve is wanting to see Wolverhampton Wanderers move forward in the right way and ideally with the right owners who have got the uh, as much ambition as he had, as much ambition as Sir Jack had to take, the, and as much ambition as the supporters have to fulfil all of those things, that's going to require a lot of money. We all know that. And so certainly he wants to find the right person who will make the deal feel great for everybody. Is it right, Jess? I mean, looking at the, the situation we just talked about, in reality nothing's changed, has it? Because it could take two years to sell. He's financially looking after you. He's just not going to be around. So in many ways nothing's going to change, is it? Other than being up for sale. Yeah, well, that's why I try and sort of say it's business as usual. 
Um, but it's a fairly significant announcement that we're making today. You know, it's serious stuff, and it's a. I think it's a sad day, not a great, not a good day. It's a sad day uh, for us to be in front of you talking about the chairman's step down for a variety of different reasons. Um, however, until somebody is found, we will carry on the way we have. I'll be running the football club as the chief executive, as I have done for 15 years. I'll be reporting into a board, and there is an owner who owns 100% of it that I'm sure will want to know what's going on from time to time. Has he, has he given you a time scale? No, no time scales. No. You have got abuse over the years. Really? Quite a bit. <laughs> Mostly from you, Pink. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry I didn't return your call the other day. That's fine, that's yeah. fine. I tried to get him to call. I'm sorry I abused you. Yeah, so I know, it's all right. <laughs> no, but the point is, you do, you do get you know, a, a fair amount, uh, but you've got to pay the mortgage. The chairman, uh, multi-millionaire Steve Morgan, gets abuse, and he doesn't have to pay the mortgage. Is that part and parcel, really, to what Dan was saying? Is, is that a part of it that, he, that he, can, he can just up and leave and not have to take it anymore? Um, well, he can do, because he has, hasn't he? He's able to do that. Um, I'd never underestimate the stresses and strains and the angst that people in responsibility of football club feel. And when support, when people are on their back, when the press is on their back, and sometimes the press we feel are unfair, but it is what it is, isn't it? You know, we're not gonna moan about it, it is what it is. But when the people who are, in effect, underwriting the ambitions of everybody are getting abuse, and they're, you know, they're paying their money to make it happen, I find that surprising across the whole of football, not just Wolves. And any owner that I speak to, and when he's talking to me about um, you know, the trials and tribulations of running a football club, I've got massive respect for those people because, you know what, they're paying money to get that. Whereas my situation, I'll never to be running a football club. If I don't like what goes with it, I could resign. I could move on and do something else. So I'm, I totally accept and can handle the abuse and the stresses and strains that come aimed at me as a consequence of my position, because I get paid to do it. But I'm not sure I'd want to necessarily be paying for doing it, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And so I'm sure that's a factor in all of the owners who decide to either move on after a period of time. If a sale doesn't come through quickly, if it was suggested it could be could be six months, it could be two years, is there a worry that obviously Steve's quite rightly going to have less commitment to it because he wants out and, and you kind of need him to have commitment, you need a chairman and an owner with commitment? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Um, the football club tries to run on a sensible basis where it doesn't require the patronage of a, an owner just putting money into it all the time. And, and it sometimes makes me wonder when we talk about the views of supporters, when um, you know, supporters say, I'm the impediment to spending money. Well, all I'm doing is fulfilling the board of directors and the owner's directive on how they want to run the club. If we sell the football club to a person who is a multi-billionaire and wants to invest 500 million pounds into Wolves and wants to keep me on as the chief executive, I can assure you, we happily spend the money, no problem at all. So I am, I am the board's responsible to the shareholders, and they have to make sure they run the club in the way the shareholders want. And um, whilst at the same time trying to achieve what we all want, which is the success on the field, and it's a very difficult balancing act. But in the meantime, as I say, you, you might find you don't have the support you know, rightly, he, 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 he's made it clear he wants to leave the club, he's done the right things for sale, but surely his well, support for the club will wane if, it, if a sale doesn't happen. Well, I think we, we have the support for uh, from Steve because he's stated that. Um, whether we're going to go out and spend millions and millions of pounds on new players, well, people would say we've never done that anyway. Some of the figures suggest differently, but we'll have to address that really, I think, when it, when it comes to it, whether we can afford to do it. Um, and how much um, our player's gonna cost, you know, all sorts of different factors. I hope that um, the sale will take place reasonably quickly, um, but I've, I'm actually sort of trying to dampen down expectation more than anything that it's gonna happen quickly because of all these other clubs that are for sale. 
and supporters need to kind of understand that. And that's why we want them to rally round, get behind the team, and let's see what happens. Other clubs, Jez, in this area, um, have, have had problems with new owners, just down the road in Birmingham, for example. And there is a be careful what you wish for scenario. What would you say to the fans who have criticised him? Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I wanted, thank you. I know. Reel him in. Come on, I'll, I'll bite. It's worth Jim. pointing out, Tom, as well, he's had a huge amount of support from a lot of fans as well. Yeah, I, so, and, and, and there's a silent... Yeah, research. well, yes. that's exactly right. And there's a silent um, group of fans currently that appreciate everything that he's done during his eight years. I think Steve's been certainly. a fantastic chairman and a brilliant owner of a football club. And his motives are clear. And he's been building the football club in a holistic fashion. And do you know what? To me, that seems like a sensible thing to do. Um, we could always, we always want more money. Supporters always want new players, more players, more, more, more. It only takes another five million. Come on, throw it. You're all. That's always being said, isn't it? And managers. And manage. Yeah, of course. Uh, coaches, managers, etc. So I think it's been a very stable period. As I remind, as I reminded everybody, over the last 32 years, four years in the top division, three of them have been under Steve Morgan, and the other one wasn't so long ago, in 2003. Yes. Um, will you personally be involved in looking for prospective buyers or will you leave that to Steve? No, I will be involved. The, the, um, uh, the uh, approaches will come into the club first and foremost. And is it fair to say that the whole globe will be welcome? You know, it's not like you yeah. want to keep it yeah. English or anything like that? Because obviously that's... We want to find the right person. Where, you know, it's having the right man or woman or to come in as opposed to where they're from. Yeah. And, and was there any, did Steve want to talk today? When we, why, you know, for example, why isn't he here? Or do you respect to yourself? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I guess he stepped out as chairman and doesn't need to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you, you, you might have wanted to say <coughs> something, you know, given he's sat the stewardship of the club for such a long time and, and have had success in that time, he might, did he not feel like he wanted to say anything particular? I, I think what he wanted was what happened. And as you guys know me, I'm always happy to try and satisfy your requirements. And many football clubs, I don't, no, I don't know. We've always done it. We've always talked to you as best we can in a sensible way. I know not always as quickly as you want, but we never duck an issue. So he wanted it the way it's happened, and I'm here trying to do my best. Yeah. Jesse, so this is, he's been thinking about this for a while. I mean, did, did you see this coming? Was there a lot of dialogue between him and the board about the decision? Or was it just made and that was that? No, he, Steve made his decision and then informed us of the decision. So you had four hours, really? That's what well, I, 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 he phoned me, yeah, uh, yeah, we can say. He asked, to come, asked me to come and see him Monday morning. Um, I did that. And then we made the announcement that it was more than four hours, whatever it was, yes. Yeah. Five, four or five, whatever. Yes, Monday afternoon. So we, we, were you surprised by this? Um, was I informed beforehand? No. Am I surprised? Not really. No, I wasn't. When I received the phone call, my first thought was exactly that. That, that was my knee jerk. I said well, with my wife, my knee jerk reaction was because I didn't say what do you want to talk to me about because otherwise he would have told me. So I said yeah, okay, I'll see you at nine o'clock, whatever. Um, that was my immediate thought. Then you obviously think of other things. What else could it be? And then you start to the bush. die. To, you know, <laughs> we don't know, we, I said a ring peak came we, had, we had a very stressful, a very stressful, difficult game on the Saturday. The game itself, looking back at the game, you know, I'd say, why does he want to see me? I'm then thinking, you know, we were all agonising over the, the game. It was, it was a really difficult, stressful day. Um, and Kevin McDonald came up with a brilliant goal to, um, rescue a point from what looked like we were going to lose, potentially, we could see the headlines, you know, lose the nine men, Preston, just promoted. It was a stressful day. So, I wasn't overly surprised, but can I'm you, saddened. Can you expand on, on why you weren't surprised? Has there been a, been a change in his... No, just, well, just, t t t the point I'm trying to say, running a football club, owning a football club is very difficult. Very, very challenging. And the, the emotional, um, energy that you, you give to this is, is quite extraordinary. But likewise, that's why it's so great. Because you are into it in such, we all know, we all love the game. We're so immersed in it that it takes over your life. 
And I think Steve just thought, all these other things, I can't allow, I can't continue to allow that to happen. I've got to get a bit more balance. Did you try to talk him out of it, get him to reconsider? Or? We talked it through, but it very, it became very, you know, two hours of talking. Um, it was very clear very early on that he wasn't for changing his opinion. Were you <coughs> disappointed? You know, promised to or, or I'm pledged to try? Sad, saddened. I'm yeah. saddened by it. I'm very saddened by it. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? Great. Thank All you. Right. Pleasure. 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 Thank you very much.